Hello students, in this video we'll discuss jointly distributed random variables. We say that two random variables x and y are jointly distributed they have the same sample space. Of course, that means their domains are the same. And if they have the same sample space, I can construct probability density functions, joint probability density functions, and then cumulative joint density functions. And so we'll say, for discrete random variables, so we'll, do, we'll do continuous random variables first. So let's do continuous random variables. So if x and y are continuous, then define F capital of x and y. This is going to be their cumulative joint distribution function of x and y is the probability that x is less than or equal to x and y is less than or equal to y. We can do an analogous thing with, with a probability mass function. So we'll say if x and y are discrete, then their joint PMF, probability mass function, the joint PMF, will be P of x and y at the point x and y. It's just going to be the probability that x is equal to x and y is equal to y. And we can define the uh, cumulative. density function, in this case, by the relationship that's just the probability, we can sum, it's the probability that x is less than or equal to x and y is less than or equal to y. So we can see it's the same exact condition over here. These two things are both cumulative density functions. But of course, in the discrete case, what we'll have is we'll have a sum to compute this. And in the continuous case, we'll have an integral to do this. And defining the joint probability density function will require a continuous function as opposed to an, a specific discrete probability. So if we look back at the continuous case, and so for example, let's do, let's do an example of this to sort of see what we have. So what we could have is we could say, let's let x and y be jointly distributed. So I have the x, let's say that this is the x column over here. So let's say that x could be the value 1, 2, or 3. And let's say here's my y column over here. y can take on the values 1, let's say 1 or 2. So let's say let's look at the PDF, the joint probability mass function for this example. And let's say that x, and x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1. So this would be, if I go down over here, that would be x equals 1 and this would be y equals 1. Let's say that takes place with probability 1 quarter, so that takes place a lot. Let's say that x equals 2 and y equals 1 happens with probability 0. Let's say that x equals 3 and y equals 1 happens with probability 1 eighth. And so let's say that x, so now y equals 2 and x equals 1. So if y equals 2 and x equals 1, we'll say this happens with probability uh, 1 quarter. And so that's 1 half and 1 eighth, so that's going to be a 5 eighths. So let's say we have a 1 eighth over here, so that's 6 eighths, and I'm going to need a, another 1 quarter over here. Let's say that we have these distributions. So we could say, for example, in this case, the probability that x equals 1 and y equals 2 would be equal to, well, x equals 1 and y equals 2 will happen with probability 1 quarter. 
We can ask the question, what's the probability that x is less than or equal to 2 and y is less than or equal to 2? Well, let's think about how x can be less than 2 and y can be less than 2. Well, we could have this probability over here. That's x and y equals 1. We have this probability equals here. x equals 2 and y equals 1. This over here, x equals 1, y equals 2. And this probability over here, they both equal 2. So we'd have 1 quarter plus 1 quarter plus 0 plus 1 eighth. And so that would be 5 eighths. And so we can use a chart to figure out in the joint probability mass function to interpret either probab joint probability masses or cumulative density functions of these random variables. Whereas for a continuous random variable, what we can say is we can say that the probability that x is less than or equal to x and y is less than or equal to y will be given as an integral. So we can write down our integral over here, and y less than or equal to y will be the integral from negative infinity up to x, the integral from negative infinity up to y, of a function f of u and v d v d u. So the v corresponds to the y, and the u corresponds to the x. And this function f of u and v is the joint probability density function. And so what we can see from this is that this is our CDF. This is our f of x, y, x, y. These two expressions are the same. And so by differentiating this twice, we get the following relationship between the joint PDFs and the joint, C the joint PDF and the joint CDF. If I do the second partial derivative with respect to x and with respect to y of the cumulative density function of x and y, if I do the x derivative of this integral over here, I'll plug in x for u. And if I do the y derivative of this integral, I'll plug the y in for v by the fundamental theorem of calculus. And so we see the second derivative with respect to x and y of the cumulative distribution function is the joint probability density function. And that gives us the interrelationship between these two quantities. So for a discrete random variable, you have the joint probability mass function, where you say the probability that x equals x and y equals y, and x and y come from a discrete set. And you can find the cumulative density function by adding up all the values that are less than or equal to x and less than or equal to y. Whereas for a continuous random variable, the corresponding sum turns into an integral. And if you differentiate that integral twice, once with respect to x and once with respect to y, you can relate the cumulative density function of x and y with the joint probability density function of x and y. Thank you very much.